Hello and welcome to the Cloud Developer Channel. Today we're going to talk about installation of an IIS web server on Windows 2016 as well as we're going to walk through the creation of a .NET Core web application. So let's get started. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with creating the .NET Core web application project. Then we're going to run that using Visual Studio Community Edition on IIS Express that comes with Visual Studio. And then we're going to show you how to install IIS Web Server itself on Windows 2016 with the different options that are available, as well as installation of the ASP.NET Core module that's required to actually be able to run the created .NET Core Web application through the IIS Web Server. And I'm going to show you how to then publish from Visual Studio to the IIS Web Server using the publishing mechanism. And then we're going to see how to actually make that run. And, um, you know basically how to set it up so let's get started I have my machine here and what we're gonna do first is we're gonna uh, go ahead and launch Visual Studio and I'm gonna actually run it as an administrator because that's gonna be required uh, later on in order to actually uh, be able to publish to IIS itself using the publishing feature and here what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new project and in this new project, we're going to choose uh, the .NET Core. And, and here you'll see an option for ASP.NET Core Web Application. I'm going to call this Test Web Core. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. In here, you have a couple options. You can uh, start off with an empty project, which basically doesn't have any, uh, any of the pre-setup uh, information, basically a blank project doesn't have any controllers, views, anything like that. Or, or you can do a, a web API project which allows you to actually have um, a basic skeleton for being able to write RESTful HTTP web services that you can expose to other consumers. Um, or the web application which is typically used uh, to actually build a website. So what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, creating the new web application and you can also choose different versions of uh, .NET Core that you would want to host it on. So I'm going to go ahead and pick 1.1 which is the latest version that I have access to on my machine. I'm also going to uh, change the authentication mechanism to Windows and this allows you to actually be able to um, see the username and see the information about the user uh, when they're actually logging in. Typically, this is used for internal enterprise type applications uh, when users are logged into the domain and not normal for uh, typical public web applications. Uh, in that case, most of the time you would use no authentication. So I'm going to choose Windows because I am running within the domain internally, so I will be able to actually see the user information. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here and I'll go ahead and create this new project. So as you can see, uh, the project got created and you can see that I have my solution and the properties window here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, collapse that properties window. And in here you can see the different folders and dependency uh, files that this project uh, requires in order to be able to run. So uh, a few things to point out. So under the SDK, you'll see the .NET Core uh, app and all the different libraries that it requires in order to be able to run. Under NuGet, here's all the different NuGet packages that are required in order to run this. And you can add more uh, as you build out your application. And Bower is used to bring in a lot of the Bootstrap, jQuery type of frameworks that are used for the front end type work. Um, under the WW root folder, this is where the actual content is stored for your uh, website. So site uh, CSS for your website, the different images you would put in here, uh, the JavaScript files go in here, and the libraries uh, go here. And the libraries, as you saw before from Bower, they actually, actually get put into this lib folder as well as you have the favorite icon file um, that is the icon file that shows up in your address bar so if you want to be able to change that you just create a new favorite icon for your website and just update it in here then you can see you have the controllers folder uh, this controllers folder actually contains your home controller which is the first page that the user lands on when they get to your website 
the views folder contains uh, different files that are required um, with starting with a view start this is your entry point to your application uh, actually it tells you which layout file to start using which is located in the shared folder in this uh, shared folder layout file this is the the main file that actually is used to show you the home page as well as other um, navigational components and user information it starts rendering the actual content of, or the body of your website things like that we'll show uh, that in later videos on how to actually customize it if you wanted to and then in the home this is where you see your index page which is the first page to load as well as a couple other pages that the user can see so I'll just show you real quick um, you can see it shows you the it generates the title um, and a few other elements that show up on that home page. So um, this is the, the core of your application. The settings files contain information uh, about your application. So if you want to be able to store settings uh, that are relevant to your application and reference them in your code, you can put them here. Um, as well as things like your program CS file. This is actually your entry point to the application itself. Um, that is hosted using what they call a Kestrel server, uh, which was created by the .NET, uh, ASP.NET team in order to be able to host and serve uh, the HTML content as well as uh, content of your application. And then the startup contains uh, some relevant information that tell your application how to actually start up, where to look for settings files, and, and different things like that. So if we actually launch this by clicking this uh, play button here using IX Express, you'll see that the application is going to start compiling uh, on bottom you see build succeeded and it's going to launch the web browser. So one of the things to note is you see the, the port number that got generated here. This is a randomly generated port number that's available um, and it could be different depending on you know how you start your application. So and this is what the basic application looks like and you can see here uh, it says hello and the username which is the user that I'm actually logged into uh, that's because of the way I've set it up using Windows authentication so I'm gonna go ahead and close this so the next step is uh, that I'm gonna show you is how to actually take this application and uh, put it up and host it in IES in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to um, go to start. I'm going to open up Server Manager, and I'm going to actually install and configure IIS to be able to actually publish to. So we're going to do that by clicking Add Roles and Features. I'm going to go ahead and choose the machine I'm on, and I'm going to select the web server. Hit Next. In here, um, I don't need to select anything. Everything required is already there. Hit next and this is the list of settings and options that you can actually configure for your IS web server. The things that we really need in order to be able to run this correctly in IES is Windows Authentication to provide that uh, IES and Windows Authentication uh, mechanism that I chose in my application as well as I'm going to need to choose ASP.NET. Um, actually, I don't know that this is required for .NET Core. Uh, I believe it's not, but in a later time uh, when we do other uh, .NET framework-based web applications, this will be needed. And uh, based on all of these options, I should be able to go ahead and hit Next and then Install. This is going to take a few moments to actually install. And uh, once we do that, we're going to be able to actually um, see the IES Manager Console uh, where we can configure the Windows Authentication module in order to allow the, the website to actually pass the right information to our web application. Um, and then we're going to quickly walk through being able to publish that application and, and see it actually launch. So let's give this a moment and then we'll get back to it once it completes the installation process. Okay, so the installation process completed. We're going to go ahead and hit close here. And um, what you should be able to do now is go to Tools, and you'll see the new option available for Internet Information Services Manager. And this is how you actually would manage your IS web server. So we're going to click here, and this is the actual machine that is hosted on. And as you can see, by default, we have the default website. 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to the authentication uh, section here and I'm going to disable anonymous authentication and I'm going to enable Windows authentication. Um, you need to do this in order to make sure that if you have Windows authentication enabled in your web application that it actually has only this enabled in order to force uh, being able to pass the right information about the users when the user is trying to hit the, this particular website. So uh, if I go back, click here again, um, you know, all these different settings are available in IS to be able to control uh, access, different session information, and other settings, uh, for example, SSL settings for your website. Uh, we're not going to cover these topics right now, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and actually try to uh, publish this web application to IIS. And as you can see here, um, there's only this ASP Night Client folder here, um, and you'll see a new folder show up uh, when we publish. We're going to do this by right clicking and clicking Publish. We're going to see the screen and select IIS as an option, and I'm going to go ahead and click Publish. And in this window, you have different methods of being able to publish. So you can use web deploy, you can create a web deployment package. You can also point to an FTP server or point to a file system. So in this case, because I, I can actually use web deploy, I'm going to go ahead and select that as an option. And since I'm doing it on my local machine, I can just specify local host. Um, if you actually have it uh, on another web server where you're trying to publish to, as long as you have web deploy properly configured, you can actually just uh, point to that server name and do that as well. And here, what I need to be able to do is specify where do I want to actually publish in the website name. So what this actually needs is the name of the website. So if you have more than one, you would need to specify the proper name. Um, as well as uh, you can actually specify a subfolder name where you want to publish it, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to specify default website and I'm going to put in a slash and say test app. And I'm going to go ahead and hit validate connection, hit next. And then you can choose the configuration you want to be able to deploy. I'm going to go ahead and choose the release, which is the optimized version of the web code that is going to be published. And you can choose the particular uh, target framework, which is, I only have one option available here. And I'm going to choose this remove additional file set destination. This actually cleans up the destination folder make sure there's nothing nothing else uh, when it actually redeploys. So if you have a prior version of code in there, it will actually remove that code before I publish it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And uh, this is actually going to go ahead and uh, pub kick off the publishing process. So it started doing that now. And it succeeded. So now if I actually go to this folder and I refresh this, you can see that now I have a, a test app here. So if I click browse, it's going to open up a browser. But as you can see, it actually failed. And this failure um, is basically saying that it could not um, access the application because it doesn't know what to do. And the reason for that is because um, a .NET Core application runs differently than a, a normal .NET framework application on IES. And what is missing is, is actually a, a module that is required for .NET Core type of ASP.NET applications now. And it's called the ASP.NET Core module. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to actually show you how to uh, download that. And uh, there's an article that they have published on the Microsoft website um, that talks about the introduction to ASP.NET Core module. And in this article, um, it talks about the reasons and how it actually does everything uh, to host a .NET Core application on IIS. And what we're going to need is we're going to need to install this ASP.NET Core server hosting bundle. And I'm going to go ahead and click this link. And it's actually going to download this um, executable and allow me to actually then start hosting the application um, in IIS. So, I'm going to go ahead and hit agree and install and it completed. I'm going to go ahead and close this window here and now let's see if it actually runs. So 
um, I was able to basically execute this web application here. So, um, and it actually runs the same way it does on IS Express, uh, but by default, the core module is not installed, that's why it fails. So, I'm going to go ahead and close this here. One of the things I do want to show you is if you try to go to this folder now, um, in this folder there is a web config file that gets created. And if you actually open it up, I'm going to go ahead and open up the notepad. And in here, I'll, you'll see that um, this web config file actually gets generated and it references this ASP.NET Core module and it points to the web application DLL that uh, we have created in our project as the actual .NET application. So this is what's required in order to be able to actually create a link between IIS and the .NET Core application to be able to start uh, making your web application run within IIS. Now if you actually go back to the project you do not see the web application or the web config file in this folder so if you go here there's actually no web config file here. Um, this is actually not required because when you uh, run it in IS Express locally, it, it knows how to deal with uh, the .NET Core application. But when you do it in IS, um, that is what you need to be able to do. So that's how you basically create a, a .NET Core application and host it in IS, as well as all the uh, minimum settings you would need in order to make it work in IS web server itself. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions please leave your comments below and I'll try to respond to them as quickly as I can and um, hope to see you next time.